What's up, my peeps? Sorry about the echo here. This is my new office. Um, for those that don't know, recap of 2023, uh, all of 2023, I was preparing to move from Oregon all the way across the United States to Florida. It actually took a lot longer than I anticipated. So in this video, my first video of 2024, I'm gonna recap some of my favorite pictures of 2023. They're not my best necessarily. It's just things that show a variety of what I shoot. And that's really where I wanna go with this channel is I want people to understand you are not constrained into a box of shooting one style. Having said that, since moving to Florida, um, I'm kind of shooting kind of one style right now and it's um, really making it difficult um, to curate the way I want to do um, my videos because I don't want to be known as an outdoors photographer and I don't want to just do landscapes. I don't want to do portraits. I don't want to do just weddings that, you know, so on, etc. I want to do it all. That's pretty controversial. And I will tell you, you're gonna get a lot of flack if you follow me, but um, I believe a photographer should be able to take a picture of anything. So um, for my recap of 2023, I'm doing 23 top pictures of 23 and what's in store for 2024. Part of 2024 will be me turning this office into something. I'm gonna make a video on that. Uh, um, about the new Digital Dream Studio. And this is just the office that's in my house. I will have a whole Digital Dream Studio outside of here. And we'll probably have another office to deal with and you, you'll get to do that. But I've been in Florida for just over a month now, or right about a month actually, because we had to drive across the United States, which I could make a whole video on that if I would have videotaped everything. But I really just spent the time with my family enjoying some of the sites and trying to get across country as fast as we can. But we, so we've been in this house for um, right at a month, right? So we, uh, um, every day I've gone out. And uh, so today I was going to, speak of that, uh, I was going to go out and videotape me trying to get pictures of some birds and some wildlife. Uh, the other day we saw some monkeys, which there's a cool story behind that. Uh, lots of wildlife here. I could be a wildlife photographer just here in Florida. I don't want to be just a wildlife photographer. I want to be uh, an everything photographer. And I want you guys to be everything photographers because your subject is your subject. It's not just a bird or just a car or just this or just that. It's whatever you want it to be. And the principles of photography are the same no matter what. It doesn't matter if you're shooting a guitar like what I have here uh, or here, or if you're shooting a beautiful woman or, um, you know, a bird on a fence post. It, it doesn't matter. It's one of those things that uh, you got to understand that uh, the principles to go behind that picture are the same. So if you're having trouble uh, with a certain genre, it's you, it's not the genre. Uh, and it could be your hang up. It could be because so many other photographers are like, you got a niche, you got a niche, you got a niche, you pick a style, stick with it, master it. Listen, spend 10,000 hours mastering your camera. Don't spend 10,000 hours mastering how to pose somebody or this or that, because not everything's gonna work that way. Um, anyway, having said all that, we're gonna just go ahead and go ahead into this video. Uh, the first picture I'm gonna show you is this one right here on the screen. This picture, uh, it's kind of a controversial picture for me. The girl that is in it actually was very difficult to work with. Um, I was doing it as a favor for uh, another creator and uh, that does the shibari ropes and everything. And um, they actually got upset because I didn't do more stuff for them for free, which is something that you'll encounter when you're dealing with people sometimes. It doesn't matter your photography and your photography. You can do whatever you want with it. I loved the picture, so that's what I'm gonna show it to you. It is, uh, the first one I'm going to show, it's not my favorite. And these are in no particular order. It's just 23 unique pictures that 
that I liked, but this one that's on my screen and I'll pop it up right here. Um, just had a cool look. We had, we're in the studio. We got the, the fog machines out. We got uh, the lighting right, the pose right. The Shibari artist did a phenomenal job. She's a friend of mine. Uh, and we literally built the shot from a little corner of the room. And I just like the tone. I like the, uh, the overall look. So there's this one. So the next one was actually just a couple of days before we were leaving Oregon. Now, <clears throat> to give everybody a heads up on uh, this trip. So we left Oregon uh, in December, December 1st, actually. So I think this was probably the last couple of days of November. We had a frost that happened in the morning. I came outside one day and the spider web that's in this picture here was frozen over. And by the time I got my camera out and everything, I took pictures of it on say the 29th of uh, November and they were okay. But by the time I got the pictures taken, the frost was already wearing off. And it was just not that great. So forgot about it, did my thing. The next morning I got up actually a little bit earlier because we were moving our stuff into a um, movie pod and there it was frosted over again because November in Oregon is pretty chilly. And so I just stopped what I was doing and got my camera, retook the pictures, and I actually had um, either my wife or my son, I'm not sure who helped me on this day, um, hold up um, just a, a piece of black material or a pillow or something behind where light was going to drift in because the light was on it, but um, it would reflect back and I didn't want that look. So they just stood kind of behind there and I snapped some pictures and it showed the frost there. Uh, could have got this picture with a flash and stuff like that. I didn't use any of that. It was just literally normal daylight, about seven in the morning, and uh, uh, basically make the background go dark by not letting the reflections come back. Other than that, there's not, nothing special. There's not even any uh, special uh, Photoshop done to it. I uh, literally this almost basically out of camera. So spider web that's the second one i just like the look at it. the simplicity behind it is really nice okay all right so this picture i you know it's one of those things it got a lot of pull on my instagram and that's why i included it in there it's actually not one of my favorite pictures i've ever taken um but uh those god rays like what we call them coming off of the clouds into the ocean uh, were pretty nice. This was um, day one. I bought a brand new truck, a Chevy Silverado. And my son and I took the truck for a test drive. It was literally, I bought the truck that the night before. The next day I'm, I'm going for a drive. So we drove to the Oregon coast, which is about an hour drive from where we lived. And I, I, we we're just driving, me and my son were driving down the road and you could see these god rays just in one spot. So I pulled over, snapped a handful of pictures, you know, three pictures or so, and didn't think anything of it. Anything of it. By the time I got home uh, the next day, I was like, oh, I should look and see if those pictures turn out cool. Um, I liked the vibe, I liked the colors. Um, obviously, once I got it into Photoshop, I um, made sure all the saturation was right. And that, um, the levels were where they needed to be, but there wasn't a whole lot of editing to this picture. This is literally the universe doing its thing. Um, and uh, uh, I put it up on Instagram and I, I had so many more comments on that than a picture that I, I put a lot more effort into. So, so I threw it in here because it was part of 2023. It was just before we moved. And I don't know, it's cool. It's just, you know, being in the right place at the right time and taking the camera. You could have got the same picture probably with your iPhone. Uh, but it's cool. All right, so this one, and I'll, I'll pop this up on the screen so you can see it better. Um, this is a great uh, picture. Uh, this was maybe a few months ago, and uh, my buddy Jason and I go out and shoot quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna miss those shoots now that I'm 3,000 miles away, but um, I'll be back, but we'll shoot again. But regardless, we're doing our thing, and my buddy Jason 
uh, and discovers this frog. He's like, hey, we're, we're going to do some macro shooting. He's like, hey, there's a, a little tree frog over here. And I'm like, really? And so we saw one, not this tree frog, but another tree frog. And I tried to get up on it, jumped away, and got away. And then my buddy Jason went to go shoot and his batteries died on his camera. He didn't have any backups. And unfortunately, he uses an iPhone, I use Canon, so we couldn't even swap back. And uh, so we're like, oh, I'm bummed. And he took a couple more steps, saw another frog, a totally different one. And I took a handful of pictures. I liked all of them. Um, they were different angles, different crops, so on and so forth. But this particular one, <coughs> just it just speaks to me. It's a uh, good color, good moodiness to it, great detail in the frog itself. And it's cool pose. Uh, it's, it's got some emotion to it, so. So here's another shoot where I was with my buddy Jason. You don't hear me mention him a lot because um, we are like bosom buddies out shooting. We both had the love of photography and uh, I wouldn't say that I was teaching him any more than he's teaching me. We're just out exploring together. Uh, we've both been shooting for over 30 years and uh, you know, we're each trying to one up each other. And by the time I drop him off at home, and uh, I'd get home, he'd send me his first edit, and I'd start editing picture, so on and so forth. Uh, and it's kind of a game that we play um, with our photography to try and make ourselves better. And not trying to be better than each other, but make ourselves better. Uh, and this particular picture was on a trip to Portland, Oregon. I had this affinity to towards old signs, and this one just with the sky and the building and the, the old nostalgia look of it um, struck my eye. And so uh, I had to throw some neon picture into my top 23 and this is what we did. Um, also Portland, uh, not to shit on Portland at all. Um, it's a cool city for a lot of people. It's not my vibe. So uh, Portland, um, holds a really strange place in my heart because I lived in Oregon most of my life. And uh, uh, there's a lot of really cool things to see, the old nostalgic building. The, the city's really being um, like thrashed on, unfortunately. So this old neon is still holding up really good. And I like, I like that look. So I shot an old neon. All right, this, this is a great uh, one. Um, a lot of times I would get hired uh, randomly from, not always, but uh, young women or um, different models and stuff to create a vibe and an Instagram look. And uh, so even though I do a lot of say boudoir stuff and everything, and this would, I would consider that in the boudoir realm, but more on lifestyles. It's something that uh, you're showing off who you are or what or whatever. Uh, this young lady, a friend of mine named Emily, uh, she uh, wanted to, she, she grew up on the beach and everything else. And the water in Oregon, and this was probably in, I would want to say October or so, but it doesn't matter. The water in Oregon, the Oregon beaches is cold. It's, you can get hyperthermia even in the summer if you're not careful. So if you were surfing or doing anything in the ocean, uh, you'd wear a, a bodysuit, uh, but uh, we went out there. It was freezing that day, and she's a trooper. She actually got uh, undressed and wanted to get uh, stuff with her with a sheet and this and that, and part of it was in the water, and she wanted to be like this um, kind of siren in the water. And uh, so this one I really like because um, she's looking off into the distance, we got a great reflection. You get the feeling that it's cold because it is fall and going into winter, but it, uh, it just has a, a cool look, a cool vibe. And this was on uh, my Instagram for a while. I've got a lot of feedback because of the reflection. And uh, it's a simple shot, nothing crazy, but for a lifestyle shoot, it, it's what you're trying to get. You're trying to get the almost candid look and you're trying to get, um, a moment capture. You're trying to capture something that doesn't look like a pose necessarily. And you'll see a lot of this in um, fashion magazines and uh, lifestyle magazines and whatnot. And, uh, she's actually a model that I got published in 
uh, magazine a couple years ago, and this was her revisiting modeling, so that's pretty cool. All right, so uh, I believe, I don't remember for sure, but I believe this is Tokuti Falls. If not, I will put up something on the screen that will say what it is. I'm pretty sure this one's Tokuti Falls, if I remember right. Uh, you have to hike down uh, to get a shot that's worth a damn, and we tried to go there uh, almost a year earlier, like uh, maybe seven, eight months earlier, uh, and which would have been a, a year ago. Like right now, we went there, and it was all icy. I mean, it was dangerous to hike because you had to hike up this um, trail, I guess. But it, I mean, it's got steps, so but they're just iced over. And it was like an ice skating rink, and uh, I'm a big guy, you know, and uh, we also had our dogs with us. It was just dangerous. So we made it maybe halfway, and then we had to turn back, and it was a wasted trip. And I was like, oh, man, that's on my bucket list. I wanted, I wanted to get this with half of it kind of frozen and stuff like that. Instead, we went uh, during springtime when it was all... Uh, nice out, outside uh, for Oregon and uh, we got this one this is Tokyo Falls I uh, waited for the light to get right to where the shadows um, fell nicely and I uh, did a long exposure so the water um, really got nice and streaky and uh, everything else was you know picking up the light really nice uh, pretty dark when I did it uh, because the sun was setting, but this is what I got. I, I really like it. Um, this was also online, kind of went um, somewhat viral a little bit because a lot of people just, you know, can't get the right angle and whatnot of this place. But uh, if you hike there, you can actually get it. It's pretty nice. Wow, right. oh, this one's a great one. So I was hired by this young lady's um, grandmother, uh, which is strange because I actually did some boudoir stuff with her grandmother a few years ago. Uh, for those that know, I've also spent the last 20 years as a tattoo artist, uh, and she was one of my clients, so I, you know, sleeved her arms and all the stuff, and, uh, uh, when she turned 50, she came and got her first tattoo and then turned into, you know, 20, 30, 40 tattoos, whatever. Uh, anyway, nicest person in the world. I, uh, I photographed her grandson um, the year before, and I was just getting ready to move. This was in October, uh, even though it, we still didn't move until December, but uh, getting ready to move, and she said, hey, do you still have time? I'd really like to get these senior pictures of my granddaughter. And they would hire me to get specific looks. So with their grandson, I, uh, it was very like school looking. He had like a, a school sweatshirt on one set. He had his cap and gown, another. So now this one was very much a different direction. And she told me ahead of time, she said, hey, um, my granddaughter is like, she's goth. You know, she, she doesn't really want to do these pictures, but I really want them. Can you uh, make them dark and moody and nice? And I said, I would love to. Now, we ended up doing a whole, I mean, we did a couple hundred pictures because um, after I showed them where I was going with it, they were just like, yeah, you know, let's, let's get this done. Um, but I did a set because there was this old barn where we went to shoot, or it was actually an old house. Um, there were some barns nearby and stuff, but um, just the house was falling apart, the stairs were dilapidated, everything just had a, a vibe and a, a, a mood to it. So what I did is I shot all around that house and I uh, got some really gothic looking stuff. But this one, I just had her sit there and just kind of, you know, I told her just to relax and, and wait for me. And really I was just waiting for her to kind of get frustrated, which she did and she put her hands there and I just started snapping. And uh, I decided to go with the black and white, uh, old school Adams Family type of look. And uh, 
I like it. It's it's simple, very lifestyle. You would never know this was a senior portrait session, but uh, it was. And we ended up, as we're leaving, we found some pumpkins that were carved that people put on their heads. And she just grabbed them, put them on her head and went to town. She had a great time. And these were the type of pictures I got. They weren't that stuffy, you know, they weren't your grandma's graduating pictures. They were your graduating pictures, you know. And uh, so yeah, we had a lot of fun with that one. I really enjoyed working with her and uh, I love what we got. Let's see here. Okay, this one's great. So this picture um, is the Pacific Northwest and all its might. Uh, if you've ever been to Oregon, Washington area, Northern California, I drove around trying to get this picture all day that day. And uh, everywhere, every time I got to a place that I thought would be really nice, the fog was gone. And um, then I ended up having to go pick up my son and do all these other things. And on the way back, I just took a ramp away and I pulled over on the side of the road. And there it was, there was the picture. Um, the only thing I did to this, as far as editing wise, is uh, I made it black and white and uh, I enhanced the fog down below. I just added a gradient just so um, the edges of the trees and the grass uh, become less uh, prevalent because it was foggy like that, but uh, I enhanced it. so. Uh, yeah, I really did that one. I actually made some metal prints of this that were, I don't know, like 36 inches long. Uh, and uh, they sold out right away. Um, I even had a guy order one and then at the last minute, because I was moving, said, oh, I, I need to cancel my order. But uh, I ended up uh, gifting that one to a good friend of mine in Oregon at the tattoo shop there. All right. All right, this is another adventure. I took my buddy Jason out on and my wife, my son went, hold on a second. And uh, it was a hot air balloon uh, night festival. It was, uh, I forget what it's called on the top of my head, but basically they they don't take off in these uh, hot air balloons, but they, they blow them up and then uh, they show off each design on things. They'll have the, uh, the fire inside there doing different things and they'll um, do different tricks to light things up and uh, it's like a, a light show with air balloons. Uh, pretty unique experience um, and this it just had a cool look. The the color as they were trying to air up this balloon um, was very vibrant and uh, it lights up the night. This They don't even start blowing them up until the sun goes down. And, uh, uh, so capture this, uh, nothing fancy, but it's, again, just uh, capturing the moment. So. All right, so this picture was once I made it to Florida. Now I had a, a picture that sold very well in my um, studio uh, in Oregon. Uh, there was a place in Oregon called Wildlife Safari. And uh, I took a picture a few years ago of the zebra and it sold really well. At that point, people were saying, hey, you should start doing wildlife because I was not known for doing wildlife or landscape at all. I was doing pictures of people. And the interesting thing about that is uh, I just got an 800 millimeter lens, uh, cheap, uh, the cheapest lens at that focal length that Canon sells. That day I took a picture of uh, a zebra and people loved it. Um, I made it kind of a sepia tone and it was awesome. Uh, sold very well. I still have it for sale. People can still get that one. But once we moved to Florida, we went to the Jacksonville Zoo. That same lens that I shot the other zebra on that kind of got me started to want to do some wildlife stuff. Um, I took and I shot these zebras and uh, I think this picture is a lot better. Uh, for me, um, I literally came around the corner and my son was like, hey, there's some zebras over there. And I picked up my camera and snapped off 
three or four pictures, nothing crazy. And uh, the mood of it just looks really, the, the, the look looks great. The light shining on their whiskers and uh, just the, the symmetry of them together. It works really well. Uh, I really like that picture. This, the, I like them both, but uh, we're talking a couple years difference and uh, you just see things differently. As you progress through life, uh, you'll reinvent yourself over and over and over and over again. Sometimes you'll backtrack and regress, but uh, for the most part, uh, this is a better composed picture for me. I like that. All right, this is a great shot. This was this last summer. Uh, we had planned on moving to Florida in June, so just Prior to us moving, we were going to every location, all my bucket list, bucket list stuff that uh, was in and around Oregon, uh, Washington, Northern California, um, you know, anywhere that I could drive to in a day and get home. And uh, surprisingly, I never took a picture of Mount Hood. I've been there a million times. Uh, it's kind of in your backyard in a way, you know, a couple hour drive for me, but. Uh, beautiful. Uh, we had never gone to the uh, Trillium Lake, and I told my wife, I said, Hey, I want to get a picture of Mount Hood with the reflection of Trillium Lake, or, you know, with it reflecting Trillium Lake. And she's like, Oh, I've never been there. We went there, and I, I got it. It was uh, a great day. There was actually um, people swimming all over in this area. So, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get the shot uh, without there being ripples in the water and everything, but we just waited it out and timed it, and I got the shot, and yeah, it turned out great. Um, I, I like the, the overall look. It'd be great for a calendar. Uh, so yeah, show you my damn outfit. Ah, so, the story behind this picture, uh, I was doing uh, some workshops and uh, different events where people would come and we would uh, get different types of pictures. And I would show other photographers how you could use light and this and that, and everything else that you can to create different moods, all within the studio. You don't need to be at a very specific place on location. And this young lady, uh, my friend Leah, uh, she actually, her dad used to work for me as a tattoo artist uh, about 15 years earlier. Um, great guy, he ended up stopping tattooing. He's uh, plays in a punk rock band. And I knew her when she was a little girl. And then we reunited uh, as she was a young woman. And she is an amazing model. I got her published in magazines. Uh, she's probably the nicest person you could ever meet in your life. Uh, and when you shoot, like I, I introduced her to lots of other photographers, and when you shoot Leia, you're going to get a shot, you know. Uh, a lot of people would be like, oh man, you, your photos are so awesome. And some of that is because I know what I'm doing, but some of it is the person I'm working with. And uh, in this particular case, uh, I just had a sheet of plexiglass, and we sprayed some water on it, and she just put her hand up there, and she gives these vibes that are... Uh, very moody, very um, sad, and yet hopeful at the same time, and um, it's very movie star look. If I do any cinematic stuff, this is what I'm hoping for, and she nailed it, so. Uh, so I have a love of cars. Um, I, when I did photography, you know, 10, 15 years ago uh, with one of my business partners, a lot of the times we would do stuff with different automobile groups and, uh, uh, you know, Fast and Furious was becoming really big, so we did a bunch of stuff. And so anytime I see a unique car or a look, I, I try to snap a shot of it. Um, this was at a car show. I was actually meeting somebody to do a, a photo shoot, lifestyle photo shoot with, and then it ended up not working out for the day for various reasons. But this, uh, I believe this is a Challenger, not a Challenger, I think this is a Challenger. Um, it's my favorite colors, the black. Uh, 
Uh, I love that. That's always been my business uh, colors. And so I had to snap a shot of that. And uh, yeah, so 2023 didn't steer me wrong. I got an automobile uh, in the mix and it's a pretty cool one. All right, so this was taken right at the end of the year. I had just settled in to my new house, the one I'm in right now. It was the end of December. And there's, in Florida, where you, if you've never been here, there's waterways and ponds and rivers and, you know, an ocean, obviously, and everything else everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's some water. And uh, this great blue herring um, was uh, treating me good, let me take some cool shots of it. This is in a pond right behind my house. And uh, uh, it took off and, uh, my camera tracked it really well. I got the shot. Also with the 800 millimeter lens that is a cheap consumer. So I uh, love this shot. This particular shot got, uh, went viral, got picked to be shot of the week for uh, Jacksonville, Florida's uh, photo group. And uh, uh, I believe it'll probably get picked up uh, in a few other places just because it's a, a nice shot of light. Everything's crisp and clean. And, uh, great blue drinks are awesome. All right, so this sexy shot, I'm just gonna uh, say this was uh, a little tutorial I was doing with my friend Jason again. Uh, this is one where I was teaching him how I approach boudoir outdoors with um, you know a model. Obviously, um, the model happens to be my wife. Um, but, uh, one of the things that he worries about when he's out shooting is he's a really tall guy. He's like six, four, six, five, six, six, somewhere in there, big dude. Um, and uh, about my age and he just is worried about being creepy and so on, etc. And I just showed him how I approach it. Even though it was with my wife, I didn't say, okay, well, you know, you can just do this with anybody. I treat my wife the same way I treat any other client. And so uh, we did a lifestyle outdoor boudoir inspired shoot. And in this particular shot, I was showing them how to pose women in a seductive way without being slutty and sleazy and um, ways to show off your environment, so on and so forth. Um, and hopefully you got a lot out of the, um, the set, but I ended up getting a lot out of the set because uh, my wife also does some um, alternative modeling and she has you know, a pretty big presence on uh, social media and you know, several other things. So um, she got some content for free, which obviously I'm not gonna charge my wife, um, but I got some good teaching time and I got some good content that I could show. Um, but my buddy Jason also got some good content and uh, got to just see how I approach it. And uh, yeah, this one was great because my wife um, takes directions really well. I said, hey, just lean against this fence, put your hands up in a fun, funky position. You know, obviously show off, you know, your body a little bit and I'm just gonna snap away. And this particular one uh, shows the abandoned area that we were at uh, really well. And I like it, and of course, my wife is beautiful. So. All right, so this picture is one of my favorites. This one actually constitutes as one of my favorites, period. I mean, not just in 23, but just in, in life. And this is a place called Thor's Well. It is in uh, just past Florence, Oregon, just north of Florence. Uh, it's a pretty well-known place, but you hardly ever would see what you're seeing here. Um, depending on when you're there with tide, uh, it would, you know, either work or it just look like a hole in the ground. And uh, um, this is actually, I believe two or three pictures blended together. And um, the, uh, the mistiness is captured because I did a, a long exposure form. Um, I really like the tone of this picture. I like the, the look and I have gone to Thor's Well 
probably a half a dozen times trying to get a picture and they never turned out like this. Uh, I got some okay pictures, but this one uh, is really great. I actually put it up on some uh, posts on Facebook and Instagram and various places online. I had people say, oh, that's not real, that's AI. It's, there's no AI in this. Um, it is just a couple of pictures blended together um, that are long exposures. Um, and that's what you see. Now, my camera almost got taken when the wave came in and uh, luckily I you know, didn't lose my camera and I didn't lose my life because people do, they drowned off of there. Uh, great place to capture something unique. And what's great about this picture is it was just published in a really big name calendar. Um, that Oregon Life is the, uh, the website and the calendar and the you know, merchandise. And in Oregon, it's a, a big, big deal. Um, they chose this uh, to be in their calendar, and which is actually right here at Oregon Life. And uh, there we are huh. April I wish it was June because my birthday is in June but I'll take April uh, so that's one of my favorite shots and it's not one that many people can get so um, I'm super happy that I got it okay so this is a tiger at Wildlife Safari. I mentioned that place earlier, that's in Oregon. Um, I'm shooting through a fence, so sometimes that really screws the way the camera wants to focus and everything. Um, I was pretty far away, I'm using the 800 millimeter lens again. Can cameras, I can't say enough good things about them. When they lock onto something, they really, you know, stick to it. Um, I got some great pictures of this tiger. And uh, it was actually, it's hard to tell on this picture, but he's actually licking a bone. Uh, they just fed him. And so he got all the meat off the bone and he's just kind of licking that bone. But in the picture, you can't really see it. Uh, the eyes on this are tack sharp and just the expression on the tiger's face is, it's good. All right. So this picture was actually shot with my Fuji, which I have up there. Um, X100F, not the V. Everybody wants the V. Pretty much the same camera. Um, it's just the V is the new version of it. Uh, you can't get those. I bought my uh, Fuji F used and uh, didn't really know how to use it yet. I had just got it. We did another trip to the Oregon coast and this was up by Lincoln City, I believe. And my Kelvin was actually messed up on my camera. Um, and I didn't realize that, you know, there was a really nice sunset happening and everything looked very, very orange yellow in the camera. It looks that way in real life, but not near as dramatic as this. Now, granted, in raw, I could switch that easily. I was not shooting raw. This was shot in JPEG because on my Fuji, I shoot in JPEG because I want it to be like a regular film camera. And so what you see is what you get. This is not altered other than the Kelvin in my camera was set wrong. And I kept looking at it. And I didn't figure it out until after the sunset was, you know, down so much that I wasn't gonna get a good picture. But uh, I like this. It's got um, Karate Kid vibes to me, and uh, uh, I didn't try changing it or fixing it. I had made prints of this. Um, this is hanging up in my buddy's office, and uh, he loves it. He like, yeah, that's that's my place. And uh, so I'm glad. Sometimes making mistakes are happy accidents, just like. Uh, they say, and I, uh, I like it, you know. Uh, so it's my happy accident of 2023. Uh, even professional photographers screw up, but sometimes they're calculated screw ups that turn out really nice. All right, so back to kind of a, a boudoir uh, event. This almost looks pornographic. Um, it's not, she is in the shadows and she has a one piece. Um, corset type of deal on. This young lady is uh, a gorgeous 
uh, woman that never really modeled before. She uh, came to me with a friend that did some modeling, was kind of apprehensive. And they just had some fun with it at some of the events I used to hold. And then the very last event I held, which is this one, they both came, her and her friend, came and rocked it. They were like, we are gonna be, you know, sex symbols. We're gonna be, you know, rap video vixens. You know, we're gonna do it all. And they brought tons of different outfits, different looks. And in my studio, I'd have, you know, about 20 different areas to shoot in that had different looks. And uh, this was the most plain area. Uh, and shooting in black and white, it just, it has very old Hollywood sex symbol vibes. And uh, uh, she's a woman of color and she, her skin just shined. And uh, I think she rocked it. And uh, uh, so I had to go in there for, for the best of 2023. Um, I think it speaks volumes. It's an empowering picture. And she's a great person too. So I had to throw her in. Okay, so a year and a half ago, my son and I drove across the United States, saw 22, 23 states in 10 days. And uh, uh, on the road to, I, I printed out a picture that got really big. It's my wife's favorite picture. It's not this one, but similar idea. Uh, the road to Joshua Tree. And I, uh, that picture was uh, long. I actually have it up up here you can't see it but uh, it's the lines of the road and it um, shows like some cactus some joshua trees and whatnot and uh, it reaped the same look of the picture i made you know a year and a half earlier but i did it instead of being a panoramic i did it in a standard like eight by ten um it shows just as much. In fact, it shows more texture than the original picture, but it's got the same vibe. I'm gonna do a whole series on this, but I really like this. And then about a week ago uh, or so, Peter McKinnon, I'm just gonna throw his name out there, posted a picture that was similar um, about you know what's coming in 2024. And I think his was to imply travel. Mine, Obviously, it was travel, but um, I was shocked that we kind of did kind of the same thing. Uh, my picture is better. No offense, Pete, but uh, I like I like my picture a little bit better. But anyway, all right, we get towards the end here. This picture was also shot in Portland. Uh, this was right at the beginning of 2023, so. Uh, it uh, was a very cold by the day. Um, I was actually just crossing the street and the bus tram systems that they had through their um, metro system um, was going through very slowly. And uh, it just, the buildings and the the coldness of outside and then the, um, just the whole vibe of it, it's, it wasn't because it had been raining uh, earlier in the day. There wasn't a whole lot of people out and it just, it looks sad and it looks uh, dreary, but it looks Portland to me. So uh, I like this picture a lot. Uh, I'd like to recreate it in some different cities, you know, and get uh, a bunch of stuff like this over time but for now that's that's my portland uh metro fit and last but not least this is also in oregon most of these pictures were in oregon because i spent most of 2023 in oregon <clears throat> but um, this one was uh back to band in oregon uh love that place beautiful beautiful beaches um I would say some of the best looking beaches in the world as far as um, landscape goes. And uh, this one, it, uh, we got there and I didn't think I was gonna get any picture that day because basically the weather was shifting a lot. And uh, 
we uh, just was coming down a rock face to get onto the beach and uh, the fog had rolled in and uh, it's right at sunset and uh, we were scurrying down there to get some sunset pictures. I got some other pictures of the actual sunset that are amazing. They probably should be on this list, but I didn't want everything to be of a beach or everything to be of Bandon or Oregon. You know, I, I wanted a selection, um, but this particular picture, the clouds look amazing. Um, the rock formations in the background are awesome. One of which is called Wizard's Hat. Uh, people just go there just to see that, take pictures of it. But the, the depth of this picture is really dynamic to me and the colors considering it was right at sunset and my camera wasn't pointing towards the sunset, the sunset is off to uh, the right of this picture. Um, it's just, it's got the look. That, that's what makes Oregon beaches look so nice, those pictures like this. Um, that's the top of 2023. That's. Um, uh, not necessarily my favorite pictures or the even the best ones, uh, the most technical. It's just a good variety and uh, I figured most people are doing top 10s. I'll do 23 out of 23, you know, and uh, now what's in store for 2024? Well, more of the same, um, but uh, I have, I'm going to have to really push hard. I'm going to have to challenge myself to get a variety because um so the challenge in oregon was literally um weather you know it rains there so much a lot of times you can't do outdoor shoots with people because of that that, that would ruin it you know they you know uh, it was real limiting it's dark and dreary and gray and uh, so a lot of the stuff would be indoor stuff and which is fine I, I like doing that stuff but i wanted you know a variety so that was a challenge now it's the opposite problem there's um plenty of nice days but i don't know people here yet to do a lot of the lifestyle pictures the boudoir pictures the senior pictures you know even weddings or, or anything else i don't have that client base yet um and so my clients are, are animals. And, uh, but long story short, the challenges here are gonna be different. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a lot more networking, a lot more traveling around. And then uh, fortunately, there's you know beautiful birds of so many species and other animals, snapping turtles and gators and um, you know, different things that I can do a lot of wildlife stuff here. I saw a wild boar the other day, um, but the challenge is going to be the other styles of photography for me. So what's in store for 2024 is more of everything. And uh, I'm going to challenge myself to get out there. And I'm going to challenge you guys to get out there and shoot because the only way you're going to get better at your craft is by doing it. Me included. I eventually you'll get those magic shots that speak to you. And uh, that's all I'm trying to do is get the shots that speak to me. Then I can put them out on social media and they can speak to others. And then when my gallery and my studio open up here in Florida, uh, maybe those shots will speak to people and they'll sell, you know, and uh, you'll be able to buy them online and so on and so forth. So 2024, here we come. Um, I don't really make resolutions. I'm not going to say I'm going to do this, this, and this. The only thing I'm going to say is the same thing I say all the time is just go out and do it. There is nothing to it but to do it.